Hey, what is up, guys? I am here to give you your raw review. But before I do just that, I want to um, talk about my polls that have been up for the past few weeks. Um, the first poll, I'm going to give you like the results so far. The first poll is what wrestling pay-per-view should I review? Um, the series, what series should I review? You can vote for WWE Armageddon. That has three votes with 60%. ECW Anarchy Wars that has one vote with 20%, and WCW Bash at the Beach, and that also has one vote with 20%. Um, let's get to the next one. I'll pull it up right now. Hold on one The next poll you can vote for is WW, what wrestling DVD should I review? It can be any wrestling DVD. Well, the ones that are here. The first one is WWE Backlash 2011, then it has four votes with 66.67%. Um, you can also vote for me to do WWE Royal Rumble 2009, and that has one vote with 16.67%. And you can also vote for me to do um, WWF, which is World Wrestling Federation, WrestleMania 3, and that has one vote with 16.67%. So, those are the votes you can vote for there. Now I'm going to get to Raw. Um, very good show. I like this show. Um... Everything was at least watchable. Um, there wasn't anything that couldn't, wasn't watchable. There was everything that I could at least sit down and watch. This was a very easy throw show to sit through. Um, okay, maybe like not one match, but that doesn't really get me down, I guess. Um, so this Raw happened on May 12th, 2014. And we get JBL, Michael Cole, and Jerry the Kin Lawler on commentary. Um, the Shield come out, which is Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, and Roman Reigns. Um, and they cut a promo, and Dean Ambrose says that, I kind of zoned out for what he said, but Seth Rollins says that he is going to take, all, they all want to get an evolution, pretty much, after what happened last week, and Roman Reigns said, this is the big dog talking, and all you did, and I suffered an RKO, a pedigree, and a triple powerbomb, and is that all you got? Um, and he says, we are not going, we are going, once we find evolution, once we see you tonight, we are going to hunt you down. And then you see Evolution arrive, which is Triple H, Randy Orton, and Batista. And they arrive in the limousine, and they have the guy, um, the sign in the bell, and the shield just rush backstage. And as soon as the sh Evolution turns around, the shield attacks Evolution. Rollins goes after Triple H, Roman Reigns goes after Batista, and Ambrose goes after Randy Orton. And a bunch of people have to pull him back, one of them being Finley. Who, Finley um, if you don't know who that is, he used to be a wrestler, look him up. Um, and I thought this was good stuff, um, and then they finally get him pulled off, so I thought this was good, this was something different than just doing a promo, I thought it was good that the Shield did what they did, like, I, I, cause I kinda hate it when the face says, I wanna hunt you down, and then they wait, and they'll see the guy, but they won't do anything, um, I like that the Shield actually went backstage and did something about it, and then we get the first match, we get Rob Van Dam, also known as LVD, um, versus Jack Swagger with Zeb Coulter inside, um, it goes to commercial, right when it comes back, it shows Zeb Coulter talking. Um, but he said that people, if you're real Americans, you would listen to what I have to say. Because this is a huge deal, like the Declaration of Independence, um, and other things that have been signed. Um, and he adds a new member of the, of his, um, the guy, the deportation list. Um, he adds Adam Rose there, you know, since he attacked him last week, and he talks him an Englishman, and he wants to party all the time. And then um, Adam Rose comes out. He comes out with all his crew. There was no um, Captain Comic though, which I was surprised about. Um, I guess he comes out. He's gonna come out with different crew on Raw than he does on NXT. Um, and um, there was a guy that was dressed like a. A cheeseburger. Um, I, it was, I guess you could say it was a hamburger, but I prefer a cheeseburger. And um, it, that was good. Um, and uh, yeah, it was dressed like a cheeseburger. And uh, he ended up, uh, yeah, but Jack Swagger tries to hit him and he falls down onto the crowd. RVD kicks him in the head and hits the five star fox blast on Swagger for the win. And that was it. Um, I'm surprised there was no Cesaro in coming out doing this, um, or, because Cesaro wasn't on the whole show, neither Cesaro or Paul Heyman, maybe they wanted to give people a break of Paul Heyman saying that Brock Lesnar broke the Undertaker's streak, but he is going to be on main event tonight 
um, facing Sheamus, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, but yeah, um, very good stuff, very strange stuff. Um, um, but yeah, LVD, I was said was probably was like this is something I when he saw Adam Rose's party and crew, I was like this is probably I would probably see hi we have a cheeseburger we have a big fat guy in a yellow suit, so this, maybe I can get away with being high now. Um, because I, if you've seen my Instagram picture, you would understand. Um, and so the next thing is, I don't even know what the next thing is, actually. Uh, Paige versus Alicia Fox. Um, Alicia Fox says that she, Paige doesn't deserve to be at the top of the Divas division, that she's just a waste, um, that she is a fluke, and she attacks her. She attacks, um, Paige. And does a backbreaker, um, throws her outside the ring, and then uh, just beats the shit out of Paige. She pretty much dominates this whole match until Paige ends up hitting the Paige Turner for the win. Um, and then afterwards, Alicia Fox freaks out, grabs like a pa soda or something, and sprays it around the arena, and then takes JBL's hat. So I thought this was good stuff. Um, I wonder if they're going to set up a Paige Alicia Fox feud, or if this was just nothing, and we're never going to see any of this again. But I think they should make a feud out of this. Have Alicia Fox become more aggressive and um, win matches and become the number one contender to the Divas Championship. I mean, you a Paige Alicia Fox feud. One feud, though, I would like to see is I would like to see a Paige Natalia feud for the Divas Championship. I want to see them go at it and win. Uh, we get Daniel Bryan promo. He talks about all the struggle, the the long hard road he had to get through to become the. Um, WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Um, with SummerSlam beating Cena and then Randy Orton cashing the money in the bank. He had to go put deal with the authority. They threw everything they could at him like uh, Randy Orton, Big Show, um, The Shield, um, Kane. Um, and he said that when he came back from his honeymoon, Kane, he suffered the worst beating of his life from Kane when he got tombstone three times on the... St on the floor, on the steps, and on the announcer's table. I beg to differ. I think the worst beating of his life would probably be when Triple H handcuffed him. Um, and then he says that, um, but unfortunately on Thursday, I have to go get neck surgery. Now, I was mad. Uh, I'm not very happy about this. He has to go get neck surgery. After all he's gone through, he has to go get neck surgery. And he says that he will be back, but he doesn't know when he'll be back. I'm kind of mad. I hope this is a work. Um, because after Daniel Bryan had to go through, if he gets this injury, that would suck. Because they probably wouldn't give him the title again. Because that Dolph Ziggler won the world title, got a concussion right away, and look what Dolph Ziggler is now. Um, just saying, but uh, yeah, I'm kind of mad. I hope I hope this is a work. Cause, yeah, I just hope it's a work. And then we get the next match. I, I, it's John Cena and Jimmy and Jay, the Usos, who are the tag team champions, um, versus the Wyatt family, which is Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper, and Eric Rowan. I think they're starting to Usos, Luke Harper, few, um, Eric Rowan, yeah, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan feud for the tag team championships. I'm not exactly sure about that though. Um, this was a good match, kind of the same as on SmackDown. Maybe a bit, a little bit better towards the end. Um, I'm trying to remember, um, Bray Wyatt, like, does, like, the stand-up walk-bottom move to one of the Usos, um, John Cena, he actually ends up baking up the STF on, uh, when he does it to, uh, Rowan, and, uh, he ends up doing a senton on him, which was cool, one of the Usos dives on, um, U the Wyatts and stuff, and then Cena ends up hitting the FU on, uh, Eric Rowan for the win, and then, um, after... They have done celebrating. Bray Wyatt says that I know what I have to do now, John, or something. Um, and he's like, yeah, and I, I'm going to love it or something. I'm just going to tell you what he says. Later on, he said he challenged, he, John Cena talked about how he had to be the last man, he was going to be the last man standing. So he wants to put it to the test of payback. Um, and, and it's probably going to be a last man, st it's going to be a last man standing match between them two at payback. And, um, John Cena is going to respond to the challenge, and obviously he's going to say yes. But I'm looking forward to seeing that. Next match. We get Evolution promo. 
Um, they come out. Randy Orton says that they should just end this. Um, put the shield out of their misery. We know they're good, so why not just put them out of their misery? Um, and Batista's like, I'm done with this. I'm through with this. And Triple H says that, because the Shield actually also earlier said that they wanted a rematch at Payback against Evolution. And, um... Oh, I just lost my train of thought. And, um, Evolu so Triple H is like, we're gonna take out everybody, don't worry. We're gonna take out the Arc Detective of the Shield and slow, and slow him down. We're gonna take out the Brawler of the Shield. And we're gonna take out the big dog. We're gonna destroy him. He won't. He won't adapt. He is never gonna come back. Um, I like what he said here. And as he's talking, the shield comes out and attacks Evolution again. Fight them off. They fight them off. And then um, Batista says, "You know what? I'm through with this. I'm done. Roman, you and me tonight." So I thought I liked that. Um, that was good. Um, good stuff right here. Nikki Bella versus Natalia. The cast of Total Divas were inside squirming. Brie Bella was one of them. Um, why was it? The, the cast consists of Eva Marie, Brie Bella, um, the Funkin' Actors, which is Naomi and Cameron. We haven't seen Summer Rae since uh, Fandango dubbed her, so I don't know what's going on with her. Um, if she got injured or something. But anyhow, um, I guess the match was alright. I like this stuff that... Natalia did when she hold when she did the abdominal stretch and then they reversed it. The match was watchable, but the finish I didn't really like when they did like a face buster and then roll up. I and N Nikki Bella won. I kind of wanted Natalia to win the match, and then she gets all pissed after the whole. Ma and the reason the match was set up was because of a segment they did on Total Divas where Nikki Bella trashed Natalia's artwork, um, and I guess she had her feelings hurt, but it didn't even show her getting her feelings hurt on the freaking show. Um... So, uh, yeah, um, I don't get it, um, and they waited two months before they did anything, um, so good stuff, you waited two months, um, so, well, several months, actually, because it's, like, filmed in, like, the last, I, I watched one episode this season, it was, like, filmed after TLC, so, I don't know, um, next match, I think it's Cody, I think it's, uh, it's Sheamus versus Curtis Axel with Ryback inside. At first, we don't know who's facing Sheamus. So, they flip a coin. And we don't really know who won because they're both happy, I guess. Um, Curtis Axel had a decent match with him. It was uh, alright. He did a neck wiggle off the top rope to Sheamus, but he kicked out of it. Then afterwards, Sheamus got him in the Texas Cloverleaf. And Curtis Axel tapped out. And Ryback ambushed him from behind. And wants to face Sheamus. And Sheamus agrees. Good match. Um, uh, Ryback did the chin breaker, Sheamus kicked out, Sheamus did the Celtic cross, Ryback kicked out, Ryback did the Miho clothesline, went for the, uh, shell shock, but Sheamus counted into a bull kick for the win, um, good match, good back and forth, I liked, uh, Ryback, I, I, I'm actually a fan of Sheamus-Ryback matches. Uh, Stephanie McMahon comes out and cut to promo, says that Dan, we Kind of recapped what Daniel Bryan said and says what they've been saying online. How he is a B-plus player because he gets injured so easily. Which has just happened. So he wants Daniel Bryan to come out and sh show um, how Daniel Bryan uh, is the new... And, like his status since he's having surgery. But then Kane's pyro goes off. Um, so Kane comes out and you see he's dragging Daniel Bryan... Um, outside like he's been knocked out like he attacked him or something and then leaves and then they stretch out Daniel Bryan they take him backstage Brie Bella's backstage too and they get him in the ambulance and Stephanie McMahon's like Steve I'm so no not Steve um Brie I'm sorry I didn't know this could happen and Brie goes stay away so I don't know if this is a work with the Bryan situation or not um since Kane still attacked him later on that night I wonder if this was just to get Bryan off TV um, I think maybe to like SummerSlam or something. I don't know what's going on. Um, it's gonna who they're gonna put the WWE World Heavyweight Championship on? They probably should put it on Boy, John Cena and have Boy Wyatt beat him for it. That would be cool. Um, let's see what happens though. That kind of would be the opposite. Um, we get Dolph Ziggler versus Fandango with Layla at ringside. Apparently, Layla and Fandango had like a kiss scene on SmackDown that I probably fast forwarded towards. Um. 
The match was good. They worked a pretty good match. Fandango slingshot at Dolph Ziggler outside the win. Um, and he dominated him. Dolph Ziggler made a comeback. Um, Fandango did the suplex. Goes for the leg drop. Ziggler counters. Hits the fame answer. Covers him. Fandango kicks out. Layla gets distracted by... Uh, Dol no, Dolph Ziggler gets distracted by Layla. And Fandango kicks him in the head. Tries to cover him. And I thought that was it. And I was shocked when he kicked out of it. That was awesome. Um, and then... Uh, Layla gets caught up in, in the um, apron, like the part of the apron that flips up when you go get the weapons. Um, and this distracts Fandango long enough for Dolph Ziggler to hit the zigzag on him for the win. So I thought that was a good match. I still like Dolph Ziggler, but I hope that WWE continues to try to use him. And then um, afterwards, they sit, Fandango says, that no matter what, you will always be my love. Dolph Ziggler, you don't... Uh, May have won tonight, but I won the battle of love. It was all really corny what he said. Next match. Now this is a Hulk. Hackshaw Jim Duggan comes out. Good stuff. Um, what happened here is he comes out and talks. To, he doesn't really get to say anything. He's like. It's good to be back on Monday Night Raw instead of being in the Legend House. And then um, Lana comes out and talks about how Rusev it, uh, talks about how the Americans are disgraced, nothing, not compared to the Russians. Um, how uh, we, we Russians gonna has a better empire. Um, and we need and the Ch we will lose to China because we need China, which is kind of true because China makes all our stuff. Um, and then uh, Alexander, well, they call him just Rusev now. And he comes down to the win, and he's, um, Lana gives him a chance to, uh, leave, or, uh, Hacksaw did not get to beg for mercy, but he doesn't do it, and says USA, and, uh, he's gonna use his, uh, 2 by 4 as a weapon, but Rusa breaks it in half, and that was awesome, and he's getting ready to attack Duggan, but then Big E comes out, tries to make the save, but he fails, he gets kicked in the head, but it was long enough so Hacksaw Jim Duggan could escape. So I think they're going to do a Big E Rusev feud now. I think this was very good stuff they did with Rusev. It was better than putting him on another squash match. I think this was good stuff to make him look really strong. And then I think we got Cody Rhodes versus Damian Sandow after this. Yes, we got um, Cody Rhodes versus Damian Sandow. Cody Rhodes had his brother Goldust at win side. Um, what happened here was... Uh, Damien Sandow is going to vent his frustrations out to the world, but he doesn't get to do it because uh, Cody Rhodes comes out before we can do that. They have a match, and this was a good match. You didn't really kind of know who was going to win because they've both been losing a lot, but good match. Um, Goldust distracts the ref, and I thought Sandow was going to win because Cody Rhodes is on this losing streak, but Cody Rhodes um, rakes the eyes and does the beautiful disaster kick for the win. Um, but I thought the match was very well done. Um, I still think they're going to tease the Cody Rhodes Goldust um, split. Because, um, uh, the, yeah, they just... Uh, um, the Wyatt family's backstage. I already talked about that. That's when they challenged under the last man standing match. We get Roman Reigns with Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins versus Batista with Triple H and Randy Orton. Um, good match. Uh, it was okay. Um... They had, they, they wrestled as long as they could. Um, you know, it was a good big band match, you know. Um, Roman Reigns goes to do the drop kick to Batista, but Triple H and Randy Orton are standing in front of him, so he can't do it. So Ambrose and Rollins dive on them, and then Roman Reigns does the drop kick. Um, Triple H is able to throw Rollins, though, over the announce table, and Roman is going for the Superman punch, and Triple H holds the leg, and then, um, Roman Reigns and Triple H ball, and then, um, The Evolution thinks that they have them, but the Shield fight back, and they have Evolution whatever they want it. They're stomping away at them, and then um, Stephanie McMahon sends guys from the locker room to come out. Jack Swagger, Curtis Axel, Ryback, um, Damian Sandow. I saw Brodus Clay out there. Fondango. All like the heel. But 
pretty much like guys that are heels. They send all these guys out there. And they're beating down the shield. And uh, Triple H grabs a chair. And he's going to execute Roman Reigns. Because all the guys are going after Roman Reigns. And Roman Reigns ends up spearing Triple H. And then the guys are still go going after Roman Reigns. But then Ambrose and Rollins come, come in and with chairs and just beat the shit out of all these guys. Um, Dean Ambrose does the bull that bulldog move to Fandango. Seth Rollins does the... the, the no, well, the headlock driver move that Ambrose does, by the way. Seth Rollins does the, uh, the knee, the foot stomp on Kurt Saxo, and then Roman Reigns spears Ryback. Good stuff. I like this. Uh, the show looks strong tonight. Um, good show. Everything was watchable. Um, got good matches. Um, I guess good promos, even though the one promo was Daniel Bryan getting neck surgery. Um, I hope it's a work. Um, because I, Daniel Bryan had to go through hell to get to the top, and, yeah, I don't know. I hope, um, this is a work. But that's pretty much it for this video. You can subscribe to this channel if you haven't. Um, subscribe to CM Brothers, Owen the Talkinator, CM Live Reactions. You can add Owen Finch, Owen Pinch, Adam Finch, and Owen Pedro Dance as a friend on Facebook. You can like my Facebook pages, Wrestling Fortune 44, CM Brothers, and, but, Oh, I'm talking to you. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, that's going to be down below. And then, as well as my Instagram. You can follow my Instagram. I will add me on Instagram, actually. You can also add me on Snapchat. Birdman105. That's down below. And add me on Xbox Live. Wrestling Fan 44 So that's pretty much it, guys. Peace out.